Hi, and welcome to episode 29, maybe? Pretty sure it's 29. Sounds about right. Maybe it's 30. Either way, welcome to M1 Yarns and the Michigan Makers Podcast. I'm Jamie, your host. If you're new here, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, subscriber, fan, whatever, welcome back. Thanks for joining me here for a fun chat. Grab a drink, grab your project, because we have a lot of fun stuff to talk about today. And we should just dive right in. Uh, last podcast, I mentioned that I got some uh, loose tea. And I ordered from the Seasoned Home, which is in Holland, Michigan. And I ordered three of these bags of chamomile tea. Check out those beautiful chamomile flowers. That's what I'm drinking right now. And it is by far the best chamomile I've ever had. And then I also ordered one of these, which is my favorite, but it's like a special go-to. And it's cranberry pomegranate infusion. It's got cranberry blossom, cranberries, blossoms and spices including cinnamon and star anise is that how you say it i don't know anyway this these both are amazing and i will link the seasoned home below so i'm excited to have that let's see i have a lot piled up around me um what am i wearing today i am wearing an oldie but a goodie this is the ranunculus by midori heroes if that's how you pronounce it. I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. And this yarn is a fingering weight with Stellina in it, held with a mohair. And this is by Melissa, who used to dye under the brand Honeybee Knits. I bought it at a trunk show that she had at a yarn shop in Ohio in 20... 19 and um i love this top this is my short short sleeve version i can't say that fast and i also knit this same pattern again after making this one i made it long sleeve and i almost actually cast this pattern on again the other day which we will get into um don't mind my little band-aid i just donated blood a short time ago today, um, I'm a big advocate for donating blood, and there is a huge national, probably worldwide, shortage of blood due to the pandemic. Um, so if you are healthy and able to, please consider it. Um, I try to do it every six weeks, and um, my iron is not always high enough, but today it was. I've been taking my vitamins. So, um, I have to leave my Band-Aid on for four hours. Um, man, we have a lot to talk about, a lot of fun stuff. I got some stash acquisitions. I had some shop updates. I've been having some fun in the dye pans. Um, so let's just start with the fun stuff. If you watched the episode a few back where I had my friend Gwen, um, over and we talked about our yarn shopping expedition you'll see that i bought some light blue dk weight alpaca by um this is blue sky and it's their brush shuri so this yarn shop near us has like a seconds or a consignment corner and you can seriously find some good yarn treasures and i bought this whole bag full of the light blue skeins they didn't look like this at the time, and I'll, I'll insert a photo here so you can see what they look like. But this bag of six skeins for a total of 852 yards of DK, so that's the sweater's quantity, was $36. Now, light blue is not really my jam, so Gwen had a great idea that I over dye them, and I did. I had a lot of fun. I just really kind of went crazy throwing in jewel tones, which is totally my jam. And what was I gonna make with this? I have something in mind that is escaping me, but I will 
If I can go back in my Ravelry and figure out what I was thinking, I'll insert it here. If not, you'll find out when I find out. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, I finished my bodysuit, which I have talked about in the last few episodes, and I'll insert a photo of it here because I actually left it upstairs. Um, and of course, I'm just like obsessed with it. I did a whole video. I have a new playlist on this channel of finished object videos. So far, there's only one, the bodysuit, but there will be more. And I just thought that pattern was so great. After I released the video, I actually thought about like 10 other things I'd want to say about the pattern. But all in all, I just think it's a great pattern. It's really fun. I love wearing bodysuits. I know it's not for everyone, but I, I really love the tucked in fit and finish of wearing one with like high waisted jeans or a skirt or whatever. I just love them. So when I was done with that, I um, had quite a bit of yarn left over because what I did was held two fingering weight skeins throughout and faded the yarn. And um, I'll insert a photo here of all the yarn I have left over because it's a hot mess in this bag. But to make a long story short, I weighed all my balls and I had 312 grams left which equals 1,248 meters, which, um, so I have in mind to use this yarn to make some leggings and I'll insert a photo of the pattern I wanna use. But I looked at the pattern and I realized I did not have enough yarn. I needed like one more full skein. So I went online looking for the yarn to see like maybe I could add in I had six colorways. Maybe I could add in a seventh that might work well with my color flow, if you will. And I had originally bought the yarn at Brooklyn General. I went on their website and sure enough, they had this gorgeous skein, which I went ahead and purchased. And I think it will go really well. So one of these days, probably this summer, I'll cast on the leggings to have ready for the fall. Um, but I am a firm believer in like no scraps left behind. That being said, I had like three gallon bags of yarn scraps and like little half mini skeins and all that kind of stuff that you just have like collecting in your craft room. And I have a project in mind, something is being created and I will show that um, hopefully on the next episode. Um, let's see, I made a list so I wouldn't forget anything. We talked about the bodysuit. We talked about the alpaca that I dyed. I have a new cast on. In fact, I have two new cast ons. So this was also yarn that I bought on that yarn shopping. Oh, I'm getting major ring light glow. I bought a box of 10 of these Annie Blatt Angora balls on that shopping trip that I had with my friend Gwen. Okay, let's be real. I knew I had the gauge swatch because if I was gonna knit with Angora, it had to be right. I mean, Angora is just so luxe. And so I had another project in mind. I think I mentioned on the podcast last time I was going to knit the Spellman. And then I considered another sweater, both by Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarns. I already had the Spellman in my library and have wanted to cast it on forever. But I could not get gauged, like no matter what. It just, it wasn't working. So I've been suffering from migraines lately never had them before in my life don't know what's causing them um that and asthma which i've had since i was a kid but there is a this is really a side sad tangent there's a possibility that speckling yarn is aggravating those two health conditions for me so i'm working with my doctor 
So if you're a yarn dyer or migraine slash asthma slash both sufferer, if you have any thoughts, let me know. I don't really have a firm grasp on the rhyme or reasons of my migraines lately. It's just been the last like two weeks. Really since I started back to dyeing yarn um, after I had some foot surgery last year, I've noticed like some weird it's like I got old overnight. Anyway, long story short, I was having a migraine when I was doing this gauge swatching. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. And I was spending like hours scrolling on Ravelry. And I finally was able to reach like a clear place in my head where I thought, okay, rather than trying to make the yarn fit into a pattern, find a pattern that works for the yarn. Duh. So I knew I was getting like 22 stitches or whatever on a size four needle, say. And I um, that's where I almost cast on the ranunculus because I was like, oh, I love that pattern. I think it would work well. But to be honest, I do love this pattern. I'm wearing like a gray tank top underneath and it's a little bit hard to style because especially for me because I'm so pale like here you can see the lace work really easily and up here but then down here where I have a tank top on and it's not like you can go naked under your top here it gets like a little bit darker or lost I just don't love that I think if I were to knit this again I don't know I would somehow and the lace like up here or I don't know I need to go back on Ravelry and see what other people do because I really don't like lace work being like on the boobs it doesn't work for me because then like let's say you just like I wear a tank top under this because you get that kind of like under boob situation or side boob what's it called you know what I mean um you gotta, you can't just wear a bra. It's a thing. So anyway, that pattern idea would have worked for this yarn, but it got nixed. And then I was scrolling through my queue and I thought, for like most things in my queue, I have yarn in mind for it. I either already have the yarn or it's a base that I carry. And I'm like, oh, I'll just either pick one of my colorways or dye something custom when I'm ready to cast it on. But this pattern was already in my queue for another um, sweater and I had already had it in mind that I would probably knit it more than once. This is the Sorrel sweater by, let me get all these strands out of the way, by Woolen Pine. I knit the, let's see if I can get closer. I knit the spring or summer version last year in cotton yarn. I think there is a spring and there's a summer version. There's dog hair. Anyway, I have seen this sweater knit like this with a tonal yarn and also knit with like a tonal with a variegated held together, maybe like a wool with a mohair kind of situation. And I think both look really good. Obviously the tonal the these dip stitches look less obvious because it just kind of is like more solid and mono if you will but I like it so I cast it on I'm in a groove I'm enjoying it I got gauge what can I say I'm loving this and I do have other yarn that I want to use to knit this pattern again and I feel like I would not have a problem going back to back, making two sorrels in a row. So, and this is totally my color. So if you've knit the sorrel, please comment below what your thoughts were on the pattern. Would you make it again? Did you get into a good rhythm? I wanna hear all your thoughts, because I know it's popular. So I cast that on as soon as I finished the bodysuit. And I also cast on another project a couple days ago just because I could not resist. But 
I'll insert a photo. I, if I can find photos before I wound the balls, I had bought some yarn from my friend, Amanda, who is Melanated Boho Bay. She is an all over crafty phenom, gorgeous person. And she makes handmade soaps. She spins, she cards bats. If you're a spinner, you gotta check out her bats. And she had a shop update maybe a month or so ago and I bought two skeins that are now in giant balls that look super messy. Just roll with me on this, okay? And I had leftover um, bulky yarn from a sweater I knit for my husband a little over a year ago. I'll insert a photo of that. And I had like four, I want to say four balls of these left. Anyway, I got an idea. Like looking at this, these skeins in my stash that I wanted to knit a bulky, stripey, this really is not even doing it justice. Let's see. You can see all the little like locks. It's kind of blowing out. That's a little bit better. Anyway, I really just wanted, oh, it's making my nose itch. Oh, I wanted like a retro vibe. And so far I've only been knitting on this for like two days. I'm almost done with the body. I think I have like four more inches to go. I've got my SOS cords here. If you're interested in how these work, I'll link a video. Um, this is, oh, I didn't even say the name of the pattern. This is the Gallant by, is it Kadri? Kade Kadri? I know her given name is Sabina. So I apologize if I am mispronouncing any of that. But yeah, it's just a fun, bulky. I thought like if I put in the melanated boho bay spun yarn, the, those two balls that I showed you, every third row to stripe it, then I could make the most of all the yarn that I had in this situation. And all the little um, locks. I don't, I think these are like Jacob's sheep. I'll have to ask her. The locks are just like so curly and cute and fuzzy. And I just love that this is like such a carefree piece. Um, yeah, I'm like just having fun with this. So highly recommend that. Um, I have another cast on coming up, but I had to wait for a knitting needle to arrive. I know as if I don't have enough knitting needles. I So I have a full set of Chow Goo, the five inch. I also have the Chow Goo nine inch, both sets. So from like zero to eight. Then I also have Knitter's Pride Ginger Short Tips. Then I have Luca's, the full set. But that full set, which I really love, and they're probably my favorite needles, they only start at a size four. And they only go up to a, oh, let me look, because, oh, a 17. This pattern's supposed to be on a 19, but I'm loose. So I'm doing it on a 17. Um, Luca's set starts at a US four. And I really wanted to have a one, two, and three of Luca, but they don't make the tips. So I ordered like a 40 inch cord thinking I can do magic loop in a pinch if need be. Long story short. The needles have arrived and I'm, that's what I needed to cast on this other project, but we'll talk about that in the next episode. I, since um, the last episode, I've had two shop updates. One is almost sold out, especially the yarn. 
it was a theme. So when my dad, when I was little, my dad was in the Air Force. And when I was in elementary school for three years, we were stationed in Alaska near Fairbanks, if you're familiar. And the winters are long and difficult, but for a kid, quite fun. We had like ice skating um, and cross country skiing for recess at my elementary school. But I know for adults, it's very different, but there's so much darkness. Long story short, the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis is so beautiful in Alaska. And early this winter, I was thinking about a theme for like a winter shop update. And Northern Lights kind of hit me as a beautiful, like if you take the night sky and you toss in the purples and pinks and turquoise and all sorts of like moody vibes, but with these like little pops of light, I thought that would translate really well onto yarn. My bracelet's caught. And so I dyed a new colorway, which I'm calling Northern Lights, on, this is DK, this is almost sold out. This is mohair and silk, my um, riding on airbase. And I also have a Surrey silk base. I'll insert a photo. Anyway. There is some left, not a whole lot. So if you're interested, definitely snag it. But um, this was the colorway I created for it. And then I also created candles, because who doesn't love candles in the winter? Um, these are eight ounce jars. And um, I, I hand make these candles if you're not familiar. I have some other candles in the shop, um, but I love hand poured candles. I think they're far superior, less chemicals, et cetera, all that good stuff than um, store-bought candles. But I made these in jasmine in all three jar colors and tobacco vanilla again in all three jar colors and can you smell it smell it mm. that's the jasmine which is a really popular scent for my other candles tobacco vanilla this is new to the shop oh my god you gotta smell it just yeah go on put your put your nose up to the screen I won't judge. Yeah, right, right there, you got it? Got it? Okay. This candle smells so freaking good. So those are in the shop. Plenty of those left as of right now. I made a ton. And then I also had my friend Lisa, who is Peapod Threads. She is my go-to bag collaborator friend. She made Notion pouches. In um, there's a whole bunch of different color options, like for the zipper, and the the lining matches the zipper. There's tons of options in the shop. Isn't that cute? And she also made project bags. And again, um, these are like sweater quantity sizes, as you can kind of judge against me. These come in a bunch of different colors for the contrast color, and they also come in this black version of this fabric. But aren't these cute? I thought this print really captures like the Northern Lights vibe so well. So a big thank you to Lisa for agreeing for like the millionth time to collaborate on bags, but that's part of the collection as well. And so yeah, that was a fun little shop update. And then real quick, um, I'll tell you the other shop update I had, which there still is some remaining of. Um, I was heavy on the mohair. So let's see here. I It dawned on me, I don't know why I never realized this. So wine is probably one of my most popular colorways and I have never dyed it on mohair before. 
same with denim. And so I dyed um, those two colorways on the mohair, which I think they look really good together. And then um, I had to get some more harvest in the shop. Look at those nice jewel tones and green olives. And then I also did three other super popular colorways. Silver Fox, Night, and Wild Child. Ooh, how about when I hold them like that? Yes. So if you're interested in mohair, go check out. Um, my mohair base is called Riding on Air. If you're new to me, all my bases have like a car themed name, like Lean Mean Machine is my 8020. Um, middle of the road is my worsted. It's a whole, it's the Motor City. What can I, I realized while editing the video that I totally forgot to talk about the stash busting make along. It's still running through March 19th and we're a little over the halfway point. I did post on Instagram the other day that we should do like a halfway mark random prize. Like, why not? We're halfway there, so let's celebrate. So I randomly selected Donna of Drops of Oil. I'll insert her name here. Donna, if you can reach out to me, I will um, include my email address and send me your info and I will happily send you a prize. Thank you to everyone who's been participating in the make along. This is all about stash busting, knitting and crocheting. And really, honestly, I think you could do like weaving or if you're a spinner and you have a bunch of fiber stash um, with fiber that you bought pre 2022 and just post your photo to Instagram using this hashtag or use the somewhat newly created um, chatter thread on Ravelry. If you look up M1 Yarns and the Michigan Makers podcast under forums on Ravelry. So um, keep stash busting away. And in the episode that follows the March 19th end date, I will draw some more prizes. So again, thank you. And everyone's projects have been really wonderful. And I'm glad that you are making use of stash that you have. Um, I, that's pretty much it for yarn content. I um, try to talk about this in terms of sections like whips, FOs, shop update, all that normal podcasting type stuff, but I do like to keep it kind of mixed up. So um, that being said, I just ordered and started to read Vanishing Fleece by Clara Parks. And if you've read this, you know how interesting interesting excuse me it is um but i'm really enjoying this and um i'm really looking forward to diving into her other books but um if you are interested in basically i'm just reading the little flap it says so i'll just read this real quick by the end of the book you'll be ready to set aside the backyard chickens and add a flock of sheep instead Simply put, no other book exists that explores our culture through the lens of wool. She, um, she talks to shepherds, shearers, dyers, mill workers. I mean, it's really like a whole, a whole journey around wool. So I'm enjoying that. I used to read books a lot. I was an English major in college and it's really fallen off lately for me. I don't know why. Now that I'm dyeing lots of yarn again, after getting, um, after recovering from foot surgery, I'm finding joy in audiobooks. So if you have an audiobook that you would recommend, like to me, the book and the narrator are equally as important. So if you have one that you'd recommend, please comment below. Um... I couldn't get, I think I couldn't get this on audiobook because I would have enjoyed listening to this while dying yarn. Other than that, for life stuff, not 
too much is going on. I, um, I will have a, sh um, blah, 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 blah. I will have an interview with another yarn shop very soon. So that will be fun. Um, if you are new here, I have a Patreon account over on patreon.com. You can just search M1 Yarns and I'll pop up where you can, for as little as a dollar a month, financially support this channel. Um, for the purposes of me taking it on the road and interviewing cool Michigan makers and other makers ab abroad from Michigan. Is that a thing? Further afield, let's say. Anyway, um, and my patrons enjoy lots of perks and special goodies and whatnot. So if you are interested and able, please do check that out. But um, that being said, I will be going on the road shortly for that. And I know last time I talked about I'm enjoying cooking again lately, like for the winter kind of thing, I guess. I make more like salads in the summer, but I'm enjoying my Instant Pot. Last episode, I shared a lovely cookbook that I've been using. And my goal this week is to get out my bread maker, dust it off, use it again. It's been ages. I am supposed to be gluten-free-ish, but I'm really bad about it. And I would like to try my hand at baking gluten-free breads in the bread maker. So if that's something that you have experience with and you have a good recipe or thoughts, Please comment below as I'd really appreciate it and maybe next episode I can report back on how the gluten-free bread maker experiment is going. So I think that's all I have for you today. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for sticking around and subscribing and liking and all that good stuff. I love bringing you these episodes and now um, as I mentioned in the top of the hour, you can find my videos on the channel organized by playlist, like finished objects. Then there's another one for um, interviews of people. I hope that makes it easy for you to find any old videos that you're looking for. And thanks again for joining me here. And I hope you are having a great week. Let me know what you're stitching on and I'll talk to you later. Bye.